The phone hacking scandal has prevented Rupert Murdoch and News International taking control of B Sky B, Britain's satellite broadcaster. But how will that affect the question of control and political influence over the rest of the media in Britain? Hello and welcome to A Simple Question with me, Phil Rees. And later in the programme, the growth of social media. Who will gain from the popularity of Twitter and Facebook? Is it the people or those in power? But first, a video clip. For the past 30 years, at least one in three newspapers sold in Britain was published by News International. The US-owned parent corporation, headed by Rupert Murdoch, prints The Times, The Sunday Times, The Sun, and until recently, The News of the World. Murdoch is a famously hands-on proprietor, who takes a close interest in his paper's editorial stance. In the 1980s, News International titles were fervent supporters of the Conservative Party under Margaret Thatcher and routinely launched attacks on the opposition. During the 1990s, Murdoch switched his support to Labour, or more accurately, Tony Blair. And I wish everyone, friend or foe, well, and that is that, the end. After Blair left office, Murdoch's newspapers reverted to support the Conservatives and David Cameron. Murdoch is typical of a breed of press barons that has historically controlled the print media in Britain. They've traditionally supported the Conservative Party and promote policies that favour the rich. Richard Desmond's Express newspapers have written favourable editorials about the English Defence League and many accuse them of stoking Islamophobia. He controls about 14% of newspapers in Britain. In the broadcast media, the BBC adheres to a so-called public service model that promoted what it calls due impartiality and the need for balanced reporting. Public service requirements were imposed on the commercially owned stations such as ITN and the Sky News Channel. The extent of government influence over broadcasting was demonstrated in the aftermath of Lord Hutton's inquiry into the apparent suicide of David Kelly a scientist at the Ministry of Defence, who leaked information to the BBC. The corporation had accused Blair's government of manipulating intelligence in order to generate justification for the invasion of Iraq. Resignations of BBC management followed in the aftermath. Following the News International phone hacking scandal, there remain serious questions about aspects of media ownership in Britain. Labour Party leader Ed Miliband says that the abandonment by News International of its bid for B Sky B is insufficient to reassure the public. He argues that current media ownership rules are outdated after the advent of internet and satellite broadcasting. Increasingly, the internet is becoming a battleground for political control. While many consider that Facebook and Twitter helped to overthrow ageing dictators in the Middle East, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange argues that these new media have become the most sophisticated spy tools at the disposal of state authorities. A Simple Question is a programme that finds out what the public thinks here on the streets of London. Today I began by asking what people knew about the ownership of the newspapers they read, the television they watch and the radio they listen to and whether it was a good thing that the newspapers are owned by a small clique of press barons. <laughs> Who owns it? Well, I suppose one person you could say is Rupert Murdoch. Uh, that's a good start. Mostly Murdoch. And uh, there's several private uh, owners, independent Tory owners, but uh, it's... Uh, I would say that 75% is owned by Murdoch Corporation. Do you know who controls the media in Britain? I think Mr Murdoch controls a large proportion of it, I believe, including publishing, printing, uh, television, etc., as I recall. Uh, quite a lot of magazines as well, um, fashion magazines, etc., I believe, and quite a broad range. Well, as newspapers, I'd say that News International own quite a significant proportion of it. Um, a lot of the news, I mean Sky News is kind of up there, ITV, Channel 4 has a, a massive voice in the media, um, but then you've got like advertising companies and I mean 
It's hard to say, really. It's a difficult question. Do you know who owns the media in Britain? Uh, Rupert Murdoch? I mean, I know he owns a lot of it, so probably. I know Rupert Murdoch's got kind of a big hand over everything, um, but I wouldn't like to say, really. Oh, I, th I like to think the uh, broadcasting organisations own the media in the United Kingdom. That's the way it's uh, always been and that's the way it should be. It's owned, I imagine, by um, very wealthy businessmen who've accumulated enormous wealth like uh, Murdoch, like the big um, commercial men in America and in Russia, the oil barons. It's, it's ultimate power and money buys you ultimate power, really. That's my view. Um, do you know, um, do you think people know who owns the media in, in, in Britain? Uh, I think a large majority of people are aware that it's uh, owned by a monopoly, whether or not who and how complicated it is. But um, I think the public are a lot more aware and a lot more less naive as to maybe what that, that ownership does to people and how it's perceived. Do you think it's a, it's a danger that a few press barons um, control the media in this country? What, in like the back, back the dealings and just in general? Well, it is, it is dangerous because it could go to like your, um, the communist way, sort of like run by certain people and that's the way you, they want it and that's the way it goes. So I don't agree with it. Well, do you think they have too much power? They do, definitely, 100%. 100%. It's, it's, um, it's almost like uh, you're in their little circle. If you're not in a circle, you're not amongst the gang, as they say. Does it scare me? Sometimes, yeah. I think so, yeah. Does it bother you that a small number of people, including Rupert Murdoch, control much of the media in this country? Yes, and I think it concerns the majority of people too because people know. I mean, everyone picks up a newspaper and everybody says, I don't believe what I read in the newspapers. So, I mean, that sort of stat stands for itself. Well, I don't think that um, uh, the press barons are um, p particularly influential in public opinion. I think uh, most people have got their um, own opinions and they're intelligent enough to make up their own minds. Do you think it's a good thing that a cabal of media tycoons owns Britain's newspapers? Yeah, but that's, I think that's not just a problem in the UK. So it's everywhere in America also, I think. So, but I think it's not good for democracy, for, for the viewers and people who consume media. Well, do you think it's good that a small cabal of people actually own Britain's press? Not at all. No, by definition, you're going to have one person dictating um, who gets what information and how. I think the fact that um, whoever, as when Murdoch backed the, the certain paper um, for the certain government campaign in a certain um, political campaign, then they won. I think that, that's quite good evidence as to how influential it is. Well, those were the views of the people on the streets of London. Now let's see if our experts agree. Sort of nine companies basically own the newspapers we all read. We've got about 1,200 newspapers in the UK, but 70% uh, of the newspapers we read are actually the 10 uh, daily newspapers and the 10 Sunday newspapers. And so all of the political influence and all the rest of it of those newspapers is owned by nine um, big companies like Guardian Media Group and Daily uh, Mail. Uh, General Trust and some of those big uh, companies and News International is one uh, own a big chunk of it they own maybe 35 37 percent of it so the, the you know Rupert Murdoch and a bunch of other big uh, businessmen and their corporate companies they own uh, much of the news media now broadcasting is different because of the BBC sort of you know a large amount of the news that we watch is owned by the BBC and um, ITV is a, is a commercial co company and Channel 4 too, they're separate individual companies so the concentration of TV news is much less and there's a strange distinction in the way we think about the difference between TV news and, and newspaper news. The News International, News of the World, Hackgate um, illustrates all of the problems that we've had with the media for a long time but which 
Um, uh, they're all contained in that story. Um, the, the, the complete integration of politicians and uh, the big uh, the owners of newspapers, the, the same with the police, the corruption of the police through the process of uh, certain types of news reporting, and then the, the complete um, sort of ambivalence, moral ambivalence about the invasion of people's privacy. All of those big issues, which have been around for a long time, are now you know, they're now all together in that one story. And so the great, that's the great thing about that story, that it's brought them all to the surface in a way we can't ignore any longer. For a long time, a lot of people and a lot of politicians have been worried about this. Because the big newspapers have a huge political influence. And because they do, their kind of journalism is exposing sensational journalism, the truth is that politicians have been scared of them. You could say that the problem in Britain is not the state control of the newspapers, but newspaper control of the state. In other words, in some countries, the state controls the media and journalists are scared of the state. In Britain, it's the other way around. The media are actually more powerful than MPs and members of parliament. And members of parliament are, uh, have said that they are scared of criticising the newspapers because they think, they believe that they will then be attacked in those newspapers and their private lives will be all over the front pages. And anyone who's got anything to hide is scared of the, of the tabloid, the big mass circulation newspapers. And that's now come out into the open because there was a scandal over one of Murdoch's newspapers, which has been tapping telephones, hacking into the voicemail of lots of people's mobile phones. Celebrities, TV stars, um, movie stars, um, and politicians. And quite suddenly, it, it blew up. This has been known about for years, but it suddenly blew up into a big crisis. And when the crisis happened, all the politicians suddenly got very brave and said, we're not having this, we're not allowing this, this company, News Corporation, to own so much TV and newspapers. And that's where we are now. News International assured the Conservative Party that if they took full control of B Sky B, the satellite broadcaster would be free from political interference. Well, do people believe that? And do they believe that the news that they see on television or read in the newspapers is really free from bias? Let's find out. I think they're all in it together, to be honest, with all due respect. I think um, they seem to collide with each other. I think there's lots of stuff that we're not actually entirely sure about or that we know about what's going on. We saw the wranglings of what happened with Rupert Murdoch um, and I think that a lot of politicians very carefully and cleverly actually got out of a very tricky situation in relation to Murdoch. So um, no, sorry, I don't think it would be impartial. Um, no, not really. I can't see how that can possibly be the case when, you know, the but they've got some sole control of uh, the main the, the main media in this country. News International assured the Conservative Party that if it got control of B Sky B, the company would be free from political influence. Do you really think this could have been the case? No. And if they had taken over, I'm a Sky subscriber, I would have dropped my subscription. News International assured the Conservative Party that if they took over B Sky B, that it would be independent of any political in interference. I mean, do you believe that? Not at all. I think you can sh uh, probably see that the amount of backdoor entries, the amount of political meetings with um, high influence uh, members of government with those sort of media players, it just goes on. It's just a fact of modern life, I suppose. And it shouldn't happen. I think they, they, they need to try, but I don't think it will happen. I, I don't think so. I think. If you own uh, something, uh, then you will influence it, either directly or indirectly, because you will uh, influence the choice of people who work in that company, because why else, why own it if you can't influence it? So it has to reflect your views, eventually. 
There's no point otherwise. Sky themselves would not have been politically independent. I think what was happening was what's now sort of come to light is the fact that it looks like the newspapers were practically running the country and they would make the decisions as to who would stay in or out of power. News International said that had they taken over B Sky B, um, Rupert Murdoch would not influence um, the satellite broadcaster at all politically. Uh, do you believe that? Um, uh, 50 per cent of me says yes and 50 per cent of me says no. I think under certain circumstances he would have influenced it, particularly if there's sufficient pressure from above, particularly regarding foreign overseas investments, uh, especially if, say, any investments he has in China, somewhere like large foreign governments were leaning on him, I think that he could well have influenced them, yes. So do you think that the newspapers you read and the television you watch is, is impartial and unbiased? Um, I mean, it, it, I mean, it depends on what you watch and what you read. I mean, obviously, if um, I'm American and we view Rupert Murdoch as very um, conservative and like right wings and so that when I do read some of his newspapers, that is what I feel like I'm being biased by um, his beliefs. No, I think what you have to do is go across the board and you'll go from the broadsheets to something very straightforward and sort of work yourself on a middle ground and say, right, OK, no smoke without fire, only some people seem to run with a storyline and blast it over, whereas other people then will sort of hold it back a bit. So you have to, you have to weigh it up yourself, basically, and not believe everything you read in one particular source. So you have to do the work yourself. Um, I like to believe that most of the time um, it... it it tries. Whether that's true, who knows. Do you think that the television news and the papers you read are somehow impartial? I'd like to think so. I think it depends on what sector of the media you're looking at. I think maybe sport, business um, are the better, but I think political is it's all based on opinion and um, what class you are and how it affects you. And that's obviously going to be um, uh, being delivered by a certain sector of society wanted to obviously benefit themselves. I think it's very subtle, it's very um, clever, but um, you are always influenced on in what's projected to you by the journalists and um, the people in the news. I wouldn't say that, no. I think every sort of media company's got an agenda, just like private individuals have an agenda. Um, public and private both have got some kind of agenda. Uh, the majority of them, yeah. The majority, but not all of them. Reasonably, I think they're out to sell newspapers. And any story, look at the Daily Telegraph exposure of MPs' expenses across the board. Now, that was to sell newspapers, and it sold wonderfully well, but it did enormous damage to both the Conservative and the Labour Party. So um, their own vested interest was not in in selling, doing that story, but because it sells newspapers. Anything that sells a newspaper, anything, doesn't matter, is the most important thing. To. Well, different views from the public there. But what do our experts think? There is no such thing as impartial media, and everybody knows that. Uh, the important thing is that people also know if a medium, a publication, a newspaper, or a TV network has a bias, it should say so. It should be clear so that people know, so that when you read something or you watch something on TV, you know where it's coming from and you know how to look at it and how to read it. I mean, some British newspapers are more biased than others. All journalists think they work towards a, a, a fairness and, and balance. They think they do, and they know perfectly well that this is the way that proper journalism should be done. And some papers are better than others, this is true. But some of them are really bad, and there's a lot of very bad, biased journalism in Britain. But everybody knows that, and everybody knows that when they read the papers. Nobody at all believed that if the, if the Murdoch Company News Corporation had succeeded in buying Sky, that it would have been political and partial. No, nobody believes that, because in the past, the Murdoch newspapers and TV have always been very politically biased. Not in any one particular direction. They switch from one party to another. The important thing for the Murdoch press, the reason for their success in a way, is because they've always back 
the winners. They always finance and get favours from the party in government. They, try, they put in a bid to buy the whole of, of the Sky television network just after the Conservatives won the last general election in Britain, which was last year. Before that, the Murdoch company had supported the Labour Party, which was the government at the time. When they realised that the Conservative Party was going to win the election, they changed overnight and all the papers suddenly became pro-conservative. No, the, the newspapers are not impartial. They have never been impartial in this, in this country. If you look at the history of the royal commissions into the press in this country, the points at which um, you, politicians start to say, sh you know, should we do something about our newspapers? They occurred in 1949, 1962 and 1977. So when there was a 1977 um, uh, inquiry into the press and they did a whole study and they said 70% of the news at the general election, the previous general election, had been conservative, had been encouraging people to vote conservative. So there's just no question in the newspapers that they are politically partisan. Um, as I say, broadcasting has to be a different, you know, all broadcasters that, that broadcast news services um, on, terrest on a terrestrial basis anyway, are required to be impartial. Now, you can argue about, you know, people always do, people say the BBC is left wing or right wing, but, 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 but the general context of news, therefore, is of impartial broadcasters by and large and very partisan newspapers. On the other hand, Rupert Murdoch, when he bought the News of the World, which I think was the first newspaper he bought in the UK, said, I didn't come all this way not to intervene. You know, Rupert Murdoch, uh, his reasons for owning uh, news organisations are not just that he loves news. He wants political power and influence, and that's very clear. And so, yes, there, there's a limit to what uh, influence he could have had at Sky News, but influence he would have had. Well, Facebook and Twitter have been credited with playing a major role in the overthrow of authoritarian regimes in the Middle East. But there are some people, including Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks, who believes the same technology can be used as spying tools by state authorities. Let's see what the people think. Yes, it has. Yeah, I mean, you, it, it, it's, they're, they're just all too tied up together and I think that there needs to be some step back and more people involved as to where everything's coming from. And obviously we need to look at the sources of where information is gained as well. And yes, people at a high level would know where those sources had originally come from. Do you think that Twitter and Facebook played a role in the changes that have taken place in the Arab Spring? Oh, uh, good question. Yeah, I think undoubtedly when people have got such quick access to um, voice their opinion, I think it's the riots show that you can create something quite quickly and quite detrimental within seconds. So I think it probably does. Yeah, definitely. Um, the riots, for example, I was on Twitter more than I was watching the TV because the BBC News was like four hours behind what was actually happening. So social media is massively important, probably more so. I. I don't, I'm not a big reader of the newspaper, I probably pick up the Metro every now and again, but I get all my news from social media, so it's definitely the way forward. Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks, um, says that social media can be used as a great spying device on people by governments. Uh, does that concern you? Yeah. I mean, personally, I don't do anything that would incriminate me, but I know there are people that do. and. From as little as going for a job interview um, and people researching you in the interview to governments checking up maybe benefit thieves, it could be used as a positive, um, but it also could be a negative in convicting you for maybe something that is a fairly petty in the grand scheme of things. I'm sure if the government could use all the information uh, they have, they would, and um, I think in extreme cases they do, but I don't think it's something that's done every day. I think everything is used as a spy tool. I think that, you know, medical cards, any records at all, whether you're on the electoral register, for example, I think, I think there is a big brother always looking over your shoulder. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. If you have something to say yourself, send an email to a simple question at presstv.com. That's a simple question at presstv.com. I'll be seeing you again next week. Take care.